Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create the delay effect. So last tutorial, we kind of played around with that a little bit where we took a buffer and we copied it and we delayed it a little bit that gives it this effect of you have one track that's playing and then there's another one that's playing that's slightly behind it. But it's not really a delay effect as we know it, or like an echo. And what we want is an echo effect. And that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. So as always, uh, I wanted to give a big thanks to Daniel Walls for his help with making this tutorial series. And uh, we've gotten the ideas and concepts for this code for for this code from his tape delay plugin. And I'll go ahead and I'll link you to it below. Also, be sure to join our Discord chat platform if you haven't already. Uh, we have a lot of great members in there. Dan's a member, and we have a lot of other great developers uh, of all skill levels. So if you're just beginning, that's okay. You can come in and join us and ask questions and be part of this community. And you can also, if you feel like you're getting help from this video and from these tutorials, you can always donate on Patreon. Uh, that's always helpful. It gives me a little bit of uh, extra spending money for my extra time that I'm taking on the weekends. If you don't want to, it's cool. Uh, and also, what else was I going to say? Yeah, like and subscribe the video. If you find that you're getting help from the video, that's always, um, it always feels nice to see when people like and get help from the video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So, so far, what we're doing is we're filling, we, we have this copy of this uh, this buffer. So we've made another buffer in part one and we've filled it with the audio data that we're getting from the, from, from the main buffer. And then what we did was we delayed that buffer in the last tutorial and we delayed it by, by a certain amount of milliseconds. And then we put that out through the audio. And what we got was this effect of one track playing with the other track well, with the same track, just playing slightly behind it, delayed by a few milliseconds. But now what we want to do is we want to make this into kind of a real delay effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to first go down to our get delay buffer method and get from delay buffer method. And we're going to change this. So add from uh, means that this is that that we're adding that we're going to like put this sound out of the speakers and that's not what we want to do at this point we just want to we just want to get this we, we just want to get this data back from the l delay buffer so i'm going to change add from to copy from okay so i'm just going to go in here change these to copy we don't have to change the arguments here because they're just the same Okay, now what we need to do is we need to find a way to get this delayed signal back out of the speakers. And this was a little bit confusing for me, and I actually had to ask, ask Dan. Uh, I was looking at the code, and I didn't quite understand his perspective on this, and I actually had to ask Dan about it. And Dan told me that it took him a while to actually figure out how to do this properly. So, uh, so it's a little bit of reversing your thinking and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new method here. I'm just going to call this void circular buffer audio processor. And I'll just call this feedback delay. For now, what I'm going to do, because I'm not sure what sort of arguments I'm going to need. I'm just going to copy the arguments from get from delay buffer. And I'm just going to put those in here for now. And then I'll just delete these and append as necessary. Okay. So now we just need to copy this over to our header file because we need to declare it in our header file here. So it would be called void feedback delay. And then I've just got these same arguments for now, and that's fine. So now we don't have a whole lot of code that we need to type, but the the way that Dan has thought about this is really interesting, and I found that um, really fascinating, actually. So what we're going to do is something similar to what we've done with these past methods, which is um, if the delay buffer length is greater 
than the buffer length except uh, we're going to go from the right position okay so you remember that, that we have the right position that as that is getting written then then this right position is actually moving forward in our in our uh, buffer right and so we want to track that and we want to make and so what the reason that we're doing this is that we is that we want to make sure that when we get to the I'm sorry, the right position is actually tracking the delay buffer length, not the buffer length. Uh, don't want to confuse that. So what we want to do is we want to track to make sure that when we get to near where the end of the delay buffer is, to, to near where the end of this vector is, uh, that we aren't going off the edge when we're trying to, if we have like a buffer length of 10, but we only have eight positions left in our delay buffer length, then we got a problem because we have two more spaces that we need. So what we need is we need those two spaces to go back to the beginning of the next iteration of the delay buffer. Okay. And you'll see what I mean. So, so what we're doing is we're using this if statement, if the delay buffer length is greater than where the buffer length is, um, and, and, and plus the, the right position. So the buffer length, meaning the amount of data that we need to grab from the buffer, then all we can do is we can do now, this is where, this is where it actually kind of flips mentally for us. Okay. We're not actually going to copy the, uh, delayed signal back to the main buffer. We're actually going to copy the main buffer to the delayed signal and we're going to put that out of the speakers. Okay. So it's actually the reverse. Okay. So we got M delay buffer add from with ramp. Okay. So we're actually adding, we're actually adding the dry signal, the main signal to the delayed signal. And we're putting that out of the speakers. Okay. A little bit of a reverse kind of trickery there. Okay, then what we could do is we could put channel, okay, then the the start sample is that we want to start, we want to start actually filling, um, we, we, we want to actually start filling from wherever our right position is in the delay buffer. So we actually want right position here, not zero. Okay, because we don't want to copy, we don't want to go from the beginning of the delay buffer. We want to go from where we're at in the right position. Okay. And then what we're going to do is here, we're going to actually have a right. We're actually going to do a right pointer. So we're actually taking the data from our main buffer and adding it to the delay buffer. And so what we need to do is we actually need to create a right pointer here briefly. So if we go up to our process block, I'm going to create a float pointer. I'm just going to call this output buffer or we could just call this dry dry buffer just just uh to make this a little bit more um relevant to to what we're doing okay so then we got buffer get right pointer and then we can just put channel in here so we're actually getting the dry signal we're adding it to the wet and then we're taking both of those we're we're, we're taking that and we're putting it out of the speakers Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to add this to my arguments. So if I go down here, I'm just going to add it at the end here. Then I need to do it in my declaration as well. There we go. And we should be fine. So, so now I'm going to do dry buffer there and then number of samples so we're we're we just want buffer uh buffer length so that's just the number of samples that we have in our buffer and then here i'm just going to put 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 as my gain amounts okay now we just need to create a case when we start getting to the end of the delay buffer what are we going to do we just need to you know, and it's kind of common sense, isn't it? We just, when we're getting to the end, we need to write the rest of the data that we, we, we need to write the remaining 
to the remaining spaces that we have in the delay buffer. And then we need to go back to the beginning and put the rest of those in the beginning of the, uh, of the delay buffer. So we're just wrapping around. That's why it's called the circular buffer. Okay, so we just need an else here. And then we're gonna do M delay buffer, uh, add from with ramp. And then let's make sure we get this right. So we got channel. Um, actually, I'm going to erase this for a second. That's actually, I'm just gonna do like this. I'm gonna declare a variable here, uh, const int, because we need to know how much space we actually have left in our delay buffer before um, for us to be able to do this math. So we're just gonna call this buffer remaining equals m delay or delay buffer length. So that's the buffer, that's the length of our buffer minus the uh, m right position. So that lets us know, that lets us know exactly where we are in that, in that delay buffer and how much space we're going to have left. Okay. So, so here, if, uh, if we don't have enough space to copy our whole buffer length, then what we need is we need to copy the remaining, uh, the remaining amount of data to, to the end. So we're going buffer remaining here. And then here, once again, we're going, we're getting the data from the drive buffer. Okay. And we're writing it to the delay buffer. Number of samples is going to be buffer remaining, right? Cause that's how much, that's how much space we have at the end of our delay buffer, uh, at the end of our delay buffer. Right. And then we're just going to do 0 0.8, 0 0.8, right? Then we need to do one more thing and delay buffer add from with ramp channel. Now we've copied the rest of the data that we have remaining at the very end of our delay buffer. So now we're back at the very beginning again. So this is why destination start sample is zero, right? And then we got buffer remaining. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, this is dry buffer. And then number of samples. So we've, we've copied buffer remaining samples to our delay buffer already. So now we need to find out how many, how many that we have left uh, in our buffer length that we can copy. So that would just be buffer length minus buffer remaining. And then I'm just gonna put 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and we should be good to go. Okay, it looks like we have an error here, what have I done? So I'm just going to copy this. Appears that my arguments might be a little bit different. I'm just gonna try that. Ooh, what's happened? Oh, I'm messing my copy and paste up here. Okay. All right, before, what, what's happening here? So it's out of definition. Okay, it's all right though. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go through what I actually need here and delete everything else. So we don't need the buffer itself. So we can just delete that. We need the channel, we need the buffer length, we need the delay buffer length. We need to know the we don't need the read pointers from our from our uh, delay buffer and main buffer, and we have the dry buffer. Okay, so now I'm going to just copy this. It's called feedback delay. Just making sure the names are right. Feedback delay. Yeah, I've just copied and pasted wrong. We should be fine now. Okay, so okay, go away. Should be fine. Um, I'm just going to now go up to my method here. 
I'm going to do feedback delay and put this method now within my channel for loop. So now I got channel, I got buffer length. I just keep these names the same just so so I know what I'm actually what I actually need to put in here. Dry buffer. Okay. That error has gone away. So we're good to go now. And let's see. Let's look at what our delay time is. 500. So I'm just going to put this to a little bit longer of a delay. I'm going to put this 200 milliseconds. Let's go ahead and build this. And see what happens. So I have this saved. That's why it's popped up saved like that and let's just play and see what happens so see now we have the delayed buff we 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 have that delay effect see, see how when i hit stop we have the delay that just kind of continues on like that so let's make it let's make it a little bit shorter right let me just i'm going to make a just a uh gain variable here so I don't have to just keep typing this in actually do I want that there or do I want it within when I'm getting let's see when I'm filling the delay buffer this I think I want it here so I'm just going to do this here so constant float I'll just call this gain equals 0 0.3 and then here, I'm just going to replace these with gain. Gain like that. Okay. So this should make the delayed signal softer than the, uh, than the dry signal. Right, because we're just reducing everything that we're copying to the delayed buffer by, uh, now it's just going to be all multiplied by 0 0.3. So let's go ahead and try this again. Yeah, so we can hear that that's, that that's softer now. Okay, so let's just change the delay, the, the delay time just for the heck of it. So let's make it 75 milliseconds. Try this. Okay. See, there we go. Delayed effect. Great. So that's where I'm going to end this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to actually get into the gain using that to actually control how long that delay tail is going to happen for. And we might start getting into creating a UI for this, creating some dials where we can actually control the delay time, control the wet and dry signal, and start completing this delay. So I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial, and I will see you next time.